Kalinga was an extremely poor village. This was a community in total poverty and alcohol addiction. Violence, ignorance, witchcraft, the occult, idol worshipping. A few kilometers will be entering the town of Almalonga. The city's 20-some thousand inhabitants have made a conscious choice to sever the continuum with ancestral spirit worship. As a consequence, Almalonga is today one of the cleanest, most prosperous towns in all of Guatemala. It's a city of churches. Many cite Almalonga as a world-class example of community transformation. It may very well be. As many as 8 out of 10 residents now consider themselves born-again Christians. But it hasn't always been like this. Just 20 years ago, Almalonga was a dark and dangerous place. Suffered from poverty, violence, ignorance, and besides that, alcohol was the main problem. If you would go to Almolonga 20 years ago in the morning, 7 a.m., and walk the streets of Almolonga, you would have encountered many, many men just lying on the street because they were totally drunk. We had many jails because there were so many problems. Chief of Police Donato Santiago recalls that people were always fighting. Officials built four jails, but even they couldn't contain the problem. Overflow prisoners were routinely bused to a nearby city. Domestic violence was especially pronounced. I talked to a woman who said that her husband would, uh, if, she, if he didn't like the meal, that uh, she, she would uh, be beaten and just kicked out of the home. Pastor Mariano Rescaje, one of the key leaders of Al Malonga's spiritual turnaround, has similar memories. I was raised in misery. My father sometimes drank for 40 to 50 straight days. We never had a big meal, only a little tortilla with a small glass of coffee. My parents spent what little money they had on alcohol. In an effort to ease their suffering, many townspeople made pacts with folk deities like Pascual Bailon, the Lord of Death, and Mashimon, a powerful patron saint. Uh, Mashimon, he was the most important idol in Almolok. When the Spaniards came to Guatemala 500 years ago, uh, they found that the indigenous people, they, they were willing to, to negotiate certain things. But there was one thing they were not willing to, to do any deal about, and that was Mashimo. That was too important an item for them. This syncretism created a powerful stronghold. Although Mashimon took on the form of a wooden mannequin, the spirit behind the idol held tenacious power over the people of Almalonga. It's just a wooden mask, but it's very powerful, a terrible stronghold that binds people. During these dark days, the gospel did not fare well. Outside evangelists were commonly chased away with sticks or rocks, while small local house churches were also stoned. Evangelical Christians were a despised minority. On one occasion, six men shoved a gun barrel down Mariano's throat. As they began to pull the trigger, he silently petitioned the Lord for protection. When the hammer fell, nothing happened. Delivered from death, Pastor Riscaje called his small flock into prayer. It was time to break the stranglehold of violence, superstition, and poverty. As the intercessors lifted their petitions heavenward, they were filled with a supernatural faith. We told the Lord, it is not possible that we could be so insignificant when your word says we are heads and not tails. We kept fasting three or four days a week, and every Saturday we held a prayer vigil. And that was what I think opened the door. People started to be delivered, men started to be saved and come to church. It was a tremendous, tremendous blessing. A revival, I would call it. And then after uh, many signs and wonders started taking place and, and uh, a lot of mass deliverances from demonic oppression, um, churches started growing. Is it true to die that when people pray 
break Kings and queens will shake Yes, it's true One dramatic healing involved a woman named Teresa. A botched medical procedure had led to the onset of gangrene. Her internal organs were literally rotting. I was in a lot of pain, so much that I couldn't walk. My whole body was paralyzed and I couldn't even eat or talk. She was very sick and her condition got worse with every passing day. There was nothing we could do, so we decided to arrange her funeral because there was no hope for her. The house was filled with family members and neighbors had gathered outside. Everyone thought she was dying. The smell of death was everywhere. They called me to arrange the funeral, and on the way there, the Lord told me to pray for her. So I just went up to her bed and said, In the name of Jesus Christ, get up. And she rose up instantly with no sickness in her body. I felt a warmth, and I saw a bright light above me. Then I opened my eyes, and I saw the pastor. I rejoice before the Lord for my healing, and I give thanks to God for my life. After they saw the miracle, my mother and all my brothers and sisters were converted. With such dramatic testimonies, hundreds began giving their hearts to Christ. When people saw that the gospel started changing lives, they started taking note. People started uh, um, becoming more and more attracted to the gospel because they saw the, the transformation in individual lives. Now there are more than two dozen evangelical churches in Almalonga, a town of just 19,000. Mariano Riscaje's El Calvario Church seats 1,200 and is nearly always packed. But the Holy Spirit's presence has not been measured by church growth alone. A walk through Almalonga's bustling commercial district reveals the impact of the revival's social transformation. Streets and buildings are named after biblical places. If foreigners find this public display of faith extraordinary, Mariano sees it as perfectly natural. How can you say that you love God if you don't show it? Didn't Paul say, I am not ashamed of the gospel? Where once Al Malanga was peppered with bars or cantinas, 36 in all, now there are only three. And as the drinking stopped, so did the violence. For 20 years, the town's crime rate has declined steadily. In 1994, the last of Alma Longa's four jails closed. The remodeled building is now called the Hall of Honor. For Police Chief Santiago, these are the good times. You don't have any jails in town now? No, no hay nada. No, we don't you, have anything. Because you don't need them? Because you don't need them. No necesitan cárceles ahora. No, porque no hay gente que cometa delitos. No, porque no hay gente que cometa delitos. Sí, no hay más delitos como antes. No, no como like antes. Even the town's agricultural base has come to life. For years, crop yields around Almalonga suffered from a combination of arid land and poor work habits. But as the people have turned to God, they have seen a remarkable transformation of their land and Almolonga became a fertile valley. It is so fertile, the, the land is so, so good. They produce the best vegetables. They get as many as three harvests per year. They sell their vegetables to Guatemala, south of Mexico, and El Salvador. Before the spiritual turnaround, growers were exporting four truckloads of produce a month. Now, they leave town 40 times a week. Nicknamed America's Vegetable Garden, Al Malanga's produce is of biblical proportions. You have to see them to believe. A bit is four and a half pounds. A carrot is this size. It is, it is just unbelievable. It... <laughs> it's bigger than my heart. It's that big. Oh, it's the green grocer <laughs> Intrigued by the dimensions of these vegetables and the town's 1,000% increase in agricultural productivity, researchers from the U.S. and other foreign countries have come to Almalonga to learn their secret. But the answer is not what they expected. The, the wisdom that God gave the farmers in Almalonga produced better crops than uh, the scientific methods yielded. And um, 
uh, the farmers constantly give the glory to the Lord for um, producing the, the bountiful harvest. Before, when we harvested the radish, it would take up to 60 days. But when God came into town, it only took 40. And now, quite often, it only takes 25 days to harvest. You can see a parallel between the people's faith and improving soil. At the same time people have started believing in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the vegetables started growing. Once people were set free, they started working. Once they began to work, they gained financially. They started working the land better, and the land started producing better. Farmers pay cash for large Mercedes trucks, and then emblazon them with Christian phrases. It is, it is wonderful, and it is the, the result of the gospel transforming the community. Idolatry and superstition have fled, leaving behind a people dedicated to fervent worship and honest labor. Traditional stoicism has given way to heartfelt exuberance. Or what you have is 20 uh, Protestant churches, very active, very militant, and uh, very involved in praise, worship, deliverance, and so on and so forth. Despite their success, believers in Alma Longa have no intention of letting up. Many fast three times a week and continue to assault the forces of darkness through prayer and evangelism. As neighboring towns celebrate the Day of the Dead, the people of Alma Longa turn out in mass to honor the living God. The town's born-again mayor welcomed a crowd of almost 15,000 into the market square. They gathered to pray for a continued expansion of the gospel in their valley and around the world. The price we pay for this is holiness and consecration. Prayer and fasting gives us victories over principalities. It wasn't a theological preparation, it was simply throwing ourselves to the Lord. I think in many cases when we talk about community transformation, we have a battle with unbelief. Is our God and is the gospel powerful enough to truly impact our community? Al Malonga teaches us yes. You had a community given to idolatry, witchcraft, alcoholism, disruptive families, and now you have a community transformed. And that's a good picture to us that yes, God can do it there and he can do it in my community. God has lifted us and we need to take advantage of this opportunity. We are a generation that God is going to use in the transformation, not only of our community, but the whole world. It is a beautiful spectacle to go and see the, the, the effect of the gospel, because you, you actually can see it. And that's what we want for our communities, for our cities and for our nations. Thank you.